Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. Uh, today's My Games Recruitment Show, where, as you can see, we're talking about the impact of AI on recruitment. And we have a really special show today, Mike, because we've got something that's a little bit, a little bit different, you could say. We do. And before I come to that, let me just say, I think, um, I mean, we all know about AI. AI is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. The genie is very much out of the bottle. And um, I, I don't know, and neither does anybody know, the final impact it's going to have <coughs> on our industry, and in fact, the world in general. All we know is it's going to have an impact. So I thought it would be a good idea to bring someone in who's got an AI product that's not the usual kind of, well, I'll write LinkedIn posts for you or I'll record a meeting for you or something. It's actually going to ring us up or ring me up on the show Sam, her name is. Sam's going to ring me up and interview me for a recruiter's job. It would be embarrassing if I wasn't offered the job, let's put it that way. But nonetheless, you do I'm get a score afterwards. Uh, you do get a score afterwards about how well oh, you do. Really? Oh, dear. I will publish that. I'll get Kirsty to publish that on the LinkedIn post so you can see how I did. But um, so we've got that product happening later. But our special guest today is Max Armbruster, who is the founder and CEO of Talkbush, and um, he is the one that's developed this product. So, Max, would you like to, to come in and join us? There he Hello, is. Mike. Hi, Kirsty. Hi. Thanks Hi. for having Hi. me. Great to have you. Now, could you tell us a little bit about yourself for the audience, please? Um, my pleasure. I, I got started in recruitment in 2003 when I was living in London. Uh, I, was, I was hiring uh, engineers at the time. Uh, and uh, I, I did the math. I, I interviewed about three thousand engineers over the, the you know following couple of years, three four years. And then afterwards, I got in. I got my start in uh, in the recruitment tech space by first using a recruitment an ATS and then building a little ATS for my own company. And then eventually, that spun off into its own company, uh, and that kind of that got me going in tech. And uh, and now for the last ten years, I've been building. Talkbush, which is a high volume recruitment platform, which uses AI uh, to, to use uh, today's buzzword to to engage with millions of candidates every year. And that's who's going to be ringing me up uh, a bit later on today, isn't it? No, she should just say as well, Max came on the show when we were doing the intro prep work for this. We log on about half an hour before and he was wearing quite a sober shirt. He saw this shirt and said, oh, I've got one of those and it's much better. <laughs> Turns out it is. And not only has Max got a better shirt than me, he's younger than me, better looking than me, and he's French. <laughs> I mean, I might as well just leave now, quite frankly, because... A big L for you, isn't it, Mike? It's a big you L. You just interview Max and I'll leave. Do some gardening or something. I That's don't know. Right, okay. okay, let's crack on, shall we, Kirsten? Okay, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. Let's set the scene. Let's make sure we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. So to begin with, Max, can you kind of explain to us what AI is? It's a basic question, but I just want to make sure we're all kind of working on the same level. Uh, well, there's there's so many different definitions. And, and um, if you look at the definition of AI, they change, they basically change it every decade. You know, um, it is, it is, uh, it, they describe it as what is on the cusp of computing science every, every decade. And so they keep moving the needle. Uh, and you know, for me, it's uh, I, I kind of go back to the early days of, of computer science, and I say, well, AI is when you have an artificial intelligence, which is an artificial decision. So when the machine is making a decision, and that machine can be programmed in a very scripted way, or in these days, it's you know, it, it, it generate decisions through uh, on the through. It could be done through statistical models, uh, through you know predictive models, or it could be done using large language models, uh, which is you know the hot topic right now, and yep. generative AI. Yep. So for me, this, anything that's decision making power is is AI. It's a very broad definition. Th this this is interesting because when I started in uh, IT or data many, processing, it was called. Many moons ago. 1978, yeah, you know, so a long time. In those days, programs are very straightforward, really. You wrote them to process data, and you knew what the format of the data was. And if anything came in that wasn't in the format that you expected, you rejected it and said, I don't know what to do with this. 
mm. and that's data processing. And that's remained the same, really, really, I think, up until 2022 when chat came out. Because from that point onwards, these machines now can actually, I wouldn't say think necessarily, but they can analyze data that they didn't know about. They can make something of data that they weren't programmed for. And this is the exciting thing for me, because now you're into a realm where a machine is talking to a person and God knows what the person is going to say. Who knows? Right. And so and so you're you've got a piece of software that can deal with that situation. Whereas the stuff I wrote in the 80s and 90s, no chance, mate. It would just say error. Not sure what to do here. And I think this is the turning point now, isn't it? I might I might take, uh, you know, the the other side of that argument and say nothing has changed. It's still to get us from point A to point B, except, you know, uh, if you think about a, an applicant tracking system, you used to configure a requisition by saying first interview, second interview, third interview, la di da, you know, all those steps like, pre, you know, uh, background screening. And it was it was very standardized and it was sort of a QA. It was a QA exercise to make sure that it goes through the process, it goes through all the steps. Um, now you still need the starting point and an end point, but you don't have to, yeah. you know, you don't have to like organize all those stop points mm -hmm. in between. You could uh, say, gather all the information you need until your decision is good. The decision will be made once you have all these data points and gather them, you know, as fast as you can. You can you can kind of give these very broad instructions, and and then give uh, the machine. We'll call the machine so so as not to throw the AI word too too many times, but the machine can then decide. Um, I'm going to contact this person through the phone, or I'm going to call his previous employer, or I'm going to send an email. I'm going to send a WhatsApp. You give it all these connectors, and then it goes and collect the data where it can. Yeah, it's it's beginning. It's the very early stages of properly thinking <clears throat> for itself, really. Now, before we go on, just a quick. Um, we're going to come to the different types of AI. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions, please do put them in the chat. You can just type them in. Now, this is one of our bigger shows. We've got a lot of people, and I know there's people from different parts of the world. So if you could just pop in the chat where you're from, that would be quite useful for us. Yeah. Just put so in anyone's where are we from. location matches the shirts is really what we're looking for. If here. there's anyone from Hawaii uh, uh, tuning in, they get a prize. That's You get the shirt. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm definitely in Hong Kong, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's in Hong Kong. Well, there you go. God knows what wow. time it is. There. Well, there you go. We're already we're already next. Okay, so now let's let's narrow the focus, Max, to recruitment. Let's narrow it. Let's focus it down because we talked about AI generally. Sort of what type? Because there are different types of AI, and we've kind of alluded to it. What types of AI can a there. recruiter use? Um, I mean, you'll find you'll find it in every category of the the candidate. Uh, journey or of the recruitment space, um, and I think I think um, you know we we're talking before the show with Mike about the sourcing AI, which I I haven't really used myself, uh, so I'm, I can't speak too much about it. Uh, but the um, you know I'm a specialist in the conversational AI, which is using these uh, what well, the technology used to be natural language processing, which is the ability to understand unstructured text. And now more recently, large language models, which also use natural language processing as one of the building blocks. Uh, and, um, you know, that's... that's so, uh, to just interrupt, when you say that, do you mean you can just speak in English or whatever language you like, um, your natural language, and the machine can under actually understand it in the sense that it can make sense of what you're saying to it? Is that what a large language mo model is? Um, the... Oh, um the 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 definition of a large language model i'm not going to give it a, a go um just ask chat gpt <laughs> for the definition but, fair um, enough then. let's, let's move I, on i'll tell you this uh, anecdote today I, I was pitching someone who was from finland and i was and i'm in hong kong which is a complex place because they speak three or four different languages here and i told her Look, ask ask the chatbot anything you want in Finnish, and it will answer you. And it it, it didn't miss a beat. So, um, and that technology yeah. didn't really exist a year ago. Uh, meaning having a polyglot, uh, a bot that can uh, generate its answers, you know, in, in any language, that didn't exist a year ago. Uh, and that's because now we have that that layer where everything is decided on the spot instead of being mm -hmm. scripted. So uh, mm -hmm. that 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 enables uh, for this kind of experience now in the uk 
does that make a difference? Not necessarily. I suppose you could you could uh, you could say based on the the type of answer I got from the candidates, adapt your style. So if somebody is very colloquial, you you know you'd ask the bot to talk a little bit more colloquially. You could you could do something like that. Mm. Okay, so just the way in which we've seen AI, and we're by the way for those people out there, we're running an AI conference in Birmingham in December in person at a hotel. If anyone's interested in coming to that, let me know and I'll send you the details. But in advance of that, we're looking at four different categories. So there's a category of AI which is basically a note taker, an analyst. So it's like Copilot or Fathom. Um, or, you know, yeah, Quill is another one, which is a very good one. So I think we're going to get Quill to come on the day, actually, and, and present to us. Um, so that's great. You've got authors, so you, things that can write content or write um, emails for you or write job descriptions for you. So they're writers, really. Um, then you've got uh, Search and Match, which is what uh, Max just mentioned, where they search all the databases on LinkedIn looking to match against the criteria that you've given it. Usually a job description actually is enough. And then you've got outreach and filter, which is what Sam is, is going to ring me up in a minute. So they kind of outreach to you and they'll filter what you say and be able to understand enough to be able to then, I think, Max, then give an assessment to to its handler. The yeah, we, we, I mean, we Sam does generate a score um but, yeah. but going back to your to your categories the the search and match that one in a way it's the it's been around the longest it's also yeah. the one that is most um laid with with a sort of uh you know mines and and pit holes um pitfalls because you could you you, you know people are afraid of asking the ai to make a, a hiring decision and and uh of course no, it's more really the way they would normally use it the way, the way it's mainly used is that it's a precursor to outreach and filter. So of all those hundreds, tens of thousands of people they could choose, machine says, well, look, these are the top 50, you you know, whatever. You make of them what you will. And then somebody yeah. has to ring them up. But what, now what we're saying is somebody doesn't ring them up. The machine rings them up. And the machine takes it down from 50 down to five. And then a human being yeah. looks at those five and says, well, okay, they're they're pretty pretty good. And so, you know, we'll... We'll kind of work with them. But in any event, I mean, there's, there's just an arbitrary description of what, what AIs are, but they can do a lot more than they could in the past. So is it time now for, for Sam to give me a quick call then and we'll see how this goes? I think it like is. It? So just, just to let everybody know what's going to work is Sam will ring Mike's mobile. We have it set up, hopefully by the mic. Um, I have tested this. It does. You can hear things. If you can't, let us know in the comments. But we are very excited. So I think... Max, is it about time for Sam to give Mike a little chat? Okay. Um, sh should I should I share my screen, show what I'm doing, or we're just going to press and... Just go call? with it, yeah. Just, just go. 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 Let's go. get on there. Okay. Uh, trigger call now. Fingers crossed this is live. If this doesn't happen, I'll upload a new uh, resume. <laughs> I'll start from scratch. <laughs> oh, here we go then. Here we go. Here we go. Here oh, we go. Gone. Don't forget to Hi, on I'm Sam, an AI recruiter from Top Push. Am I speaking to Mike Ames? Yes, you are, Sam. Yes, pleasure to speak to you. I'm happy to have the opportunity to speak with you, Mike. I'm calling you because you applied for the recruiter position at Top Push. How are you today? I'm very good, actually. If I was any better, I'd be twins. How are you? I'm glad to hear that. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Now, do you remember applying for the recruiter position or would you I, like me to refresh your I, I, memory? To be honest, it? I've I've applied for quite a few jobs and I, I, I've lost track a little bit. So could you just very quickly summarize it for me, Sam? Of course. The phone interview recruiter role focuses on conducting initial phone screenings for candidates. You'll assess their qualifications by asking predefined questions and recording their responses. It's all about clear communication and attention to detail. I'd like to take a few minutes to learn more about you. Do you have a few minutes to continue the conversation? Yeah, sure thing, Sam. Yeah, go for it. Great. Just a heads up, this conversation will be recorded for recruitment purposes. Do I have your consent to proceed? You do. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Let's get started. Do you have a right to work in the UK? Um, well, I was born in Cannock, so I'm not sure that counts, but probably yes, I think. Noted. 
Let's move on. How do you ensure you communicate clearly and effectively during phone interviews? Well, um, first of all, I like to speak on loudspeaker. I'm speaking on loudspeaker to you today. So I really like to be able to be hands free so I can take notes and type things up. Um, so that could be a problem for some people. But I normally find myself uh, a corner where it's quite quiet um, or I put headphones on. And so that that kind of helps as well. Perfect. It sounds like you have a good approach. Now, can you describe a time when attention to detail was critical in your work? Yes. When I used to be an airline pilot, um, I, it was very important that I had complete um, attention to detail on taking off and landing. Whilst we were flying around, it wasn't so bad. I could have a coffee and chat to the stewardesses. But landing and taking off, man... You know, that had to be very, very accurate. Otherwise, well, we could crash. Understood. That's a great example. How do you organize and manage your schedule to ensure all interviews are conducted on time? Okay, so I have a work to list and I prioritize the people I want to speak and then I just ring them. I don't wait. I just ring the next one, ring the next one, ring the next one. It helps. I don't know. Have you got a CRM system that I could use? Noted. It sounds like you have an efficient method. I'll address the CRM system question after we finish the interview. Can you provide examples of your experience in recruitment, specifically focusing on conducting phone interviews? Yes, um, I started in 1988 when I was 14. Uh, and the first three months uh, of my career was constantly on the telephone. And then for the next three to four years, I predominantly did candidate work, but also some client work as well. Great experience. How do you plan to transition from a broad based recruitment and business development role? to focusing solely on phone interview recruitment. I'm sorry, could you could you explain that question again, please? I didn't quite catch it. Sure. How do you plan to shift your focus from a broad-based recruitment and business development role to concentrating specifically on phone interview recruitment? I don't think I can I can answer that question really. I'm not really sure what I would do to be honest. That's completely okay. Thank you for your honesty. Given your extensive experience in business development and consulting, why are you interested in the phone interview recruiter position? I really like using the telephone. I like actually speaking to people on the no, telephone no. and I enjoy interactions. So telephone work for me is really good. Plus, I'm really old now and I find that anything more energetic tires me out by 11 o'clock in the morning. Understood. It's great that you enjoy phone work. Thank you for sharing all your insights. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. Do you have any questions before we wrap up the call? Yes, I, I did want to. I mean, how much does it pay? Can you tell me that? I don't have the specific details about the pay, but you can ask a human recruiter about that later. Um, any other questions? Yes. What would be the next stage then? What, what happens next? A human recruiter will reach out as soon as we have news about your application. Thank you again for your time, Mike. I wish you the best of luck in your job search. Thank you, Sam. Have a great day. And you too. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> oh, that was exciting. What were your first thoughts, Mike? Well, obviously, I, I just want to put a, a, a we just, I was talking off air to Max about this, right? I mean, I think that was outstanding. I've got to be honest with you, you know, that that she could understand and she, okay, some of the answers are prescriptive, fair enough, but this is a product that's two years old. See, mm, I, it's, I know, I know, I know it's, gonna, years, it's four, four months old. <laughs> four, four months old, yeah, okay, 10 years. Overnight success over the last 10 years. But the point of trying no, to no, make... No, 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 seriously, Sam itself is four years old, meaning we didn't do any voice before that. Yeah, okay, so... Where is it going to be in four years' time or eight years' time? I don't. I don't think. And we're going to talk about the future of AI in a minute. But I don't think you can necessarily 
judge where we are now as being a, a judgment of AI and the effect it's going to have. It's a trajectory. You have to kind of look forward. You have to think about where this is going to go. And having spoken to her, I mean, you get a score now, I think, isn't that, that right, Max? So the machine sends a score now. Yeah, uh, no, I, I could show it to you now. I just looked it up. Yeah, no worries. So what I will say is anybody's watching, I would wonder what your thoughts are. Anybody who's watching, what you think? Can you foresee any issues or anything like that? Because I think there's some links. I mean, we've had some. There's somebody really liked the answer around the CRM question. Somebody else really liked the thank you for your honesty when Mike said I can't do it, which I thought was a really nice little touch. I really enjoyed it. I do enjoy the juxtaposition between Mike's obviously very British and she's very cheerful, which for some, you know, she's always like, thanks. And you're like, oh, I love it. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, but yeah, let us know what your thoughts were. For, for, for yeah, those okay. Those I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think you can share the scheme, screen. I don't, I don't can, think uh, so. Max, I think you should, uh, where it says present at the bottom, you might be able to yeah, share yeah. the screen. Yeah, yeah okay. Let, to let's just have a quick look at what, it, at what it sent through, because I've got a feeling I didn't get the job. Just, I just think. Well, uh, it, it's a grade out of five. I don't know what, what we consider to be a passing grade. I guess it's it's all it all depends on you know what's available out there. <laughs> I'm guessing it's not a five. Is all I'm thinking. I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, Let's bring it up. Yeah. So here we go. Drum roll. Three point seven out of five. So bad, Mike. Uh, that's not too bad, then, is it really? <laughs> so there were then. There's some notes. Uncertain about the right to work. Unable to answer a question on how to transition to phone interview recruitment focus. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I guess it, you know, it could, I, I think you did better than 3.7, but anyway. Really? I don't think I did. I wouldn't buy <laughs> me. <laughs> so, um, so can I just ask then, on, on, so this report obviously just looks at, at the questions that were asked and the questions that were predefined um, for Sam to ask me. Do you, if if she was ringing a fifty people, say, which she could do at once, I presume, would it then? Okay, this is the detail. Would it then produce a, like a summary report to say, right, here's fifty people I called in this score order. So this is a five point five or five, and then at the bottom is like a one or something. Is that how it works? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, here I could filter by by job types, and I could I could look at all the recruiters and then rank them by score. You could do that. I uh, just want to correct you real quick on uh, you said the, the questions are pre-scripted. None of the questions are pre-scripted. The only one that was pre-scripted in the whole interview was the right to work. Everything else was decided on the spot. And wow. so when she asks you, you know, what do you think about doing phone interviews, considering, you know, you've got 30 years of experience. Um, that's that's obviously a custom question just for you. Uh, it, it wouldn't have been asked to somebody who's straight out of the university. So, so okay. So, if you've got different jobs, but she would ask different questions. Is she prompted with the job description? Then is that what job questions she wants that she decides? Yeah, yeah. And and we we released it that way so that people could be impressed by how autonomous it is. So it's impressive. But in reality, most users, most recruiters, are not really that ready to give that much autonomy to the machine so they they want to decide what questions to ask and so they so we have we have that feature of course now that you can you can uh impose your questions uh and and it's still it's even if you script your questions it's still a valuable tool just because they can do the back and forth the q a answer questions about your company you know and it, if if we had fed information about benefits and salary, it would have been able to answer the other CRM, for example, it would have been answered to answer those questions. We just, we, you know, we just didn't feed it those questions. Hmm. So I'm guessing as well, then, um, interesting question just come across. So yeah. I'm guessing as well on, on this, Max, that um, the, the more Q, the more answers that she gets, whether she does it or whether a human does it, you can refine the search patterns even further. Like if three people had said, what CRM system do you use, for example? Not that they would probably, but then you could say, oh, well, okay, she needs to know the CRM system and needs to know a little bit about that. So if that crops up again, she'd be able to answer that. So is it kind of a, an adaptive, iterative process to get her to where she needs to be? It it, it takes uh, it takes feedback. So if, uh, you know, I, I don't need to show you the platform, but it you, you can say, you know, you can give it feedback and it will feed it into its uh, behavior for the next interview. 
right it gets better basically it self learns as, but it's, as you... it's it, it learns it learns from your feedback uh, yeah. so it's not yeah, 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 it's not yeah, autonomous yeah. learning like that was that was a very hot uh, ai technology but but this one is more of a um you know it's it's supervised learning it's called so you you tell it how, how to change it, improve its behavior uh, from one interview to the next and um and but hopefully been... you know we want to get it to a point where it you know every every recruiter has fine tuned their sam to a point mm -hmm. where they don't want to use anyone else's because they're like i got it just right <laughs> yeah. i was gonna say there's, yes. a sense, there's a sense of control though and um uh what's the word like um where everything's the same standard if you're kind of the one giving her the information consistency is that the word you're scrubbing? thank you mike if you're the one saying like this is what we expect sam for your little branch and like you say she becomes sort of bespoke to your organization keeping that consistency going so i do really really like that now we have had some questions max and i'm going to come to them keep them coming guys i'm going to bring them up with max in a second but before then mike i believe it's time for a message from our sponsor Yes, it certainly is. Yes. So our sponsor is uh, Giant Finance, as you know, and I wanted to talk about an element of finance that they offer that you might not know about. But I'll bring it up specifically because I know in these difficult times, sometimes cash flow can be a bit of an issue. Now, for temporary and contract and interim, one expects, obviously, a finance provider such as Giant to be able to help. You stick an invoice in and you get paid immediately and then the client pays several weeks, months later sometimes. But you can also have exactly the same service with permanent invoices. So if you want to submit an invoice, a permanent invoice, yeah, it might be a wee while before you get paid, but you want the cash now, then Giant offer a service whereby you can actually get that money. So not only are Giant there for you if you want to grow your contract or interim or temp arm, but also they can help alleviate some of the cash flow issues that you have with permanent um uh, invoices too so if you want to reach out to them there's a link uh, down below in the uh, in the linkedin post and in the youtube and in the uh, spotify description you can just make contact with them and find out what they can do for you in permanent or contract fantastic okay max there's a couple of questions coming for you so um we are limited on time so if max if if you can't answer it in a short way then you let me know and we'll move on to the next so first one the one that i think is a really really great question someone's asked how are the answers kept intact from a data security standpoint yeah well uh there's no short answer to that one <laughs> you have to look at our infosec policy and the fact that we get penetration testing uh the fact that you know we 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 have professionals who try to hack into the system um, and then you have to investigate our infrastructure. Uh, we do host uh, data. We have servers all over the world and in order to be compliant with data privacy laws as well. And, um, you know, you just have to take my word for it. Uh, we're getting through the SOC 2 certification right now. So so it's a lot of work that goes into it, and it's very boring. I, don't want to I think, that. funnily enough, the pen testing is really important, isn't it? Because you can be pen tested like this week and next week something else comes out. So it's that regularity of penetration testing, isn't it, that makes a difference? Yeah, yeah. We have customers like Accenture and some banks, and they ask us for our pen test every year. So we, we have nowhere to hide. I bet. Yeah. Okay. This is a question. And again, um, I imagine if it's not there already, it might be coming in the future. Does it have a plug in to Microsoft Teams? It's a great question. Um, the there's two ways to access Sam today. One is through a phone call, and one is through a web uh, a web browser. So I think with MS Team you can have a call connect to MS Team. So in, in sort of a hacky way you could make it happen. The more straightforward way where you add somebody into a call uh, from the web. We haven't built that yet, but we we yeah we established it's feasible and like you said coming soon. Uh, so yeah. it's. Uh, um, happy to happy to build it for you, LinkedIn user. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see who you are, sadly. So, so this is a question I, I think is is going to be very interesting because I know recruiters and I know that there are going to be recruiters listening to what Sam was saying, thinking there's no way that's going to replace me or anything like that. Someone Ian's asked, he loves it, but has there been any pushback from candidates or anything like that? Uh, the um the volume that we have so far is for high volume uh hiring so it's not the the sort of executive level hiring and generally 
they see it as, wow, this is this is a, just a, a cool new way of interacting, which seems less clunky than than the way it used to be. So the feedback is good. Uh, they're they're happy with the experience. Sometimes, you know, the the hard thing about a phone call is if you don't expect a phone call. So mm -hmm. if you, if you use Sam to like call people at random and they don't expect the call, um, that's when you get a little bit of uh, iffy results. But if it's okay, you're about to start a call with an AI. Are you ready? Yes. Then people are in the right mindset. It, it goes very smoothly. Yeah. So Chris actually asked the question. He said, great webinar. His only concern would be the retention rates of maintaining people on call past the first 10 to 15 seconds due to apprehension of speaking with AI or what they may perceive to be pre-recorded like a mass scam. Mm -hmm. So I imagine this will become less of an issue over time. But like you say, these people are sort of expecting a call. So yeah. they're going to be less resistant to it. Yeah, yeah. Imagine a sequence where somebody's applying from in, uh, from Indeed, or or you, you send them a met, or it could be even a more um, uh, for for a staffing firm. You could have some uh, a recruiter who's like you know not a technical recruiter, but a recruiter who calls a candidate, has a quick chat with him, and say, look, I, I want to check if if you're technically qualified for this job. Do you mind talking for ten minutes with my AI? Is she's going to do the interview right now, and uh, and at the end of it, I'll get a nice report that I can share with our client. And, and and you know it, it, that's that's a very controlled environment. So, so then I think the candidate would would have no problem playing along. Yeah. Okay. But, but then, and for our customers, it's more like we send a WhatsApp message and say, you know, we need to spend ten minutes on the phone with you. Are you cool? And and when you are, say yes, and the call will start. And then we already have their phone number because they're on WhatsApp. So so uh, so they they're expecting it again. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Sorry, phone, my... phone calls are great for for you know on the spot thinking and like catching somebody thinking, uh, as opposed to like a scripted interview where mm. it's question answer question answer. You you have to think on the spot like like Mike just did. So it, it does have um, I think you know better content from the candidates. Like you, they're less likely to cheat because they're they're speaking and thinking as they go. Mm. Yeah. An interesting thing about this as well, I'm not sure whether it applies to your AI, but I read a study where an AI had beaten a, CI, a, C, a CIA analyst in terms of telling whether someone was lying or not. So the analyst was trained to try and pick out lies in suspects and various things, terrorists or whatever, and the AI went up against it and its score was slightly better. It was because it, it read... I don't know what it read, the eye movements or something. Not obviously the case for a, a telephone call, obviously, but um, <clears throat> but when it was on a fake, it was on done through video, the machine was better at choosing uh, whether someone was telling the truth. Now, this is early stage technology, but this is all going to come in, isn't it? This is all going to happen. This I'm is afraid so. Yeah, as dystopian as it sounds, like they, they already are able to read emotions and detect sentiments, and of course, mm -hmm. there'll always be people who are. You know, it's going to be like a a, 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 a weapons race. You know, yeah. uh, the candidates will get smarter at beating the AI, and then the AI will get smarter at beating the the cheaters, and and it'll go on for, you know, probably the rest of our lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. Um, uh, I mean, I, I know we're kind of going through the the strengths and weaknesses now of it, but I think just to round this section off, because we do want to talk about the future of AI, I want to spend a little bit of time on that because very interested to know what Max thinks about that because he's well and truly in the space. But I think just on the strengths and weaknesses, I think whatever you see with AIs now, it's just early days. It's it's the front end of a very very it's the thin end of a very thick wedge. And I think that, that one of the reasons we did this and the reason that we're doing our, our conference in December is that we really want people to begin to immerse themselves into it because it's generally the take of a technology isn't to do with the technology more often than not. It's to do with people's reticence to engage with it. It's like the internet was really powerful, nine, you know, 1998, 99, but really didn't take off for a, a few more years after that because people were a bit, oh, it's the internet. It's not for me, really. So... At the same time that technology is developing and getting better and better, and I'm not sure whether this applies to Sam or not, but a lot of this tech is based on chat. So if chat gets better, if there's version five of chat, then everybody's product gets better, whether you've developed it or not. So there'll be an acceleration, I think, like we've never seen before in technology. It's going to happen. Yeah. 
but yeah. it's not what we've got now. Don't look at it now and think, oh, that wouldn't work for me. Or no, 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 no. Get into it, fully understand it, and then watch it develop. And then you choose when you hop in there. It's your choice. But my advice to you would be not to ignore it. It's here to stay, and it's going to be revolutionary, I think. Yeah. Okay, so shall we talk about kind of what's next? I mean, you sort of alluded to more coming, but Max, mm. in your opinion, kind of what is... Yeah, Max, yeah, share next, with us what you think. What are the next things that are happening, do you think? Well, um, oh, you know, on our roadmap, um, I can say that we're, we're releasing um, an API, which means that you can send, you know, more contextual information to Sam and say, here's a job offer I made to this candidate. Can you can you talk to him about whether, you know, if he's got any questions about the contract or can you call Sam uh, who's showing, you know, okay, Sam, can you call the candidates because we he's supposed to come to the office tomorrow, make sure he's got, you know, he knows how to get there. Uh, stuff like that. So gradually it's going to start eating away at a lot of these small things that if, if you look at them on their own, they, they don't seem like, you know, a full time job, perhaps. Uh, but as you start to eliminate them, it, it will increase product, you know, productivity uh, per headcount tremendously. Uh, so how will people compete in that world? Uh, I think they will they will naturally compete, not necessarily, I mean, the, with the AI, yes, but also by being even <laughs> more high. So uh, if if you are the the agency that that has the extra, no, that takes the the time to meet the candidate face to face, that'll be a differentiator. Mm -hmm. um, to to get to know their family, to uh, to to follow them over a long period of time, like the the white glove is going to get even wider and mm -hmm. even silkier, mm -hmm. because. Um, that that'll be the the way to differentiate, and that that'll be um, expected from from the market. Because just like now we take Uber and Netflix and these things for granted, uh, you know, a real time immediate response with a very personalized engagement will become the standard way consumers interact with all brands, including B two B brands, and in you know. In, in order to stay uh, competitive in that space, like you're, you're, you're going to have to have superhumans who are extremely human, extremely high touch, extremely nice. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess the, the job of a recruiter in my mind is going to evolve towards one of that. It'll be a little bit closer to hospitality. Like mm -hmm. it'll be about delivering great experiences uh, rather than, than, you know, grading people. Well, I am um, uh, just come back from holiday, and while I was away, partly because I was, we, I knew you were coming on the show, and partly because I'm just interested in the subject, I basically just listened to one podcast after another on AI, and I attended again Benjamin Mina's uh, online uh, AI conference in the states, uh, and I immersed myself and binge watched everything I can get. And I tell you, there's a range of different views if you do that. On the one hand it's going to be a damp squib. It's going to take 10 years before it makes any difference. And you just people will be just thinking, well, it's like email. You know, it's like, yeah, it doesn't really work anymore. Uh, it's there. It's, it's the human touch that makes a difference. Right, yeah. The other end of the spectrum, it's like it, essentially give or take two years, the recruitment industry will be wiped out in seven years' time because simply because end users will think, well, I'll get the AIs. Yeah. And the AI will be so good that they can actually bring people up. They can properly prioritize them and present to the TAs in larger companies, a list of five people. These are good to go. They're ready. They're booked into your calendar. You can speak to them and then you can interview them for the job. And even smaller businesses, there'll be a rise in TA consultancies that will just do temporary TA work and they'll just use the AIs to produce a list of people when they're needed. So who knows really where it's going to be. But I do think for a short period of time, probably two to three years, massive benefits to agencies. Forget what happens with clients. Massive benefits if you embrace them and use them properly from those the four early categories. adopters. Yeah. yeah, early adopters in those four categories. Not so much content production, weirdly, because a lot of the content production it produces is pretty sterile. I mean, it's well yeah. produced, but you know it's been produced by an AI, mm -hmm. so it kind of loses a little I bit. Mean, of its production. kind of like Sam in a way. Like Sam, she does the job, but she didn't. You know, she didn't blow you away with her personality, right? No, no, but she will in three years' time, four Very years' friendly. time, five years' time. She will. You know, you will. She is patient. She, she is friendly. Will. She is always on time. She doesn't sleep. She doesn't go to the bathroom. And she knows well, about anything. So she so has a few. Like, another thing was, you, as, as, a, as a candidate, you have your own AI. 
that talks to you every three months or four months on a frequency that you've decided and asks you how it's going. You know, do you want me to start looking for a job for you? And then and you say yes, and then the machine goes out and looks for jobs and reports back and then introduces you to companies or introduces you to agencies or whatever it, it is. Uh, so I, I just think it's like having a help desk. You can ring 24 hours a day, and when you ring up, it knows who you are and it knows every single conversation it's ever had with you. But this is a new world now, and I think it's important to embrace it and really get in, as you said, Max, really early on. And if, if you have like a dozen clients and you typically have to put, you know, uh, one recruiter dedicated to one client uh, in an RPO type of engagement, well, that's because the human brain can only capture so much. But if, if you have a system where um, the AI can also feed the behavior of, you know, adapt, help the, the each recruiter adapt his behavior to the situation in a split second, potentially they could handle tens or or you know dozens of uh, dozens or hundreds of, of clients, uh, and they would know how to behave in in that moment. So uh, that that should also expand the market for smaller customers. Because if you're a company that has less than fifty employees, you need to do recruitment all the freaking time because you yeah. don't really have time. You don't really have the money to hire a good recruiter in house. Uh, well, sorry, if there's that, anybody that, listening that, who point, Max, I think one of the things that be a that they'll be able to do if they can't do now it won't be long before they can do it really effectively is build talent pools mm -hmm. but whether that's from a, an agency's point of view that wants to build talent pools of people who aren't ready to go but they know that at some point they're going to want to move and they want to know they want to work with a company that specializes in that or if you're an end client that you begin to build your own talent pools and the ais will be able to do that remarkably well i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we important. have got one last question and then i think we're kind of come to the end of the show but i i really enjoyed this comment and i want to see your point kevin has said ai in recruitment will take over the identification and engagement layer of the recruitment process but human recruiters will still be the determining factor when it comes to persuasion. This is the 20% of value that human recruiters will bring to the table, how to persuade. Good point, Kevin. Yeah, good point. The question is, will will those recruiters be in an agency or will they be at the end client? I think, I think what you've said there is bang on, actually, to be honest. Perfect. Okay. Right. We have kind of come to the end of the show now. I know we could speak to Max for another day or so, but in a second, we're going to come to Max and talk about kind of the thing that you can do to get started in, in AI or something. But before then, Mike, I believe we can talk about our next show where, strangely, considering we've been talking about TAs, we we're kind of have one on the show. terribly excited. We've got Victoria Kirkhope, who used to be head TA for RSM Tenon, very large accountancy firm. She's retired from there now, but she's going to come on and talk to us about from a, a TA's perspective and a HRD, the same thing. How can you how can you get to win these people over? How can you differentiate yourself from the hundreds of recruitment companies that ring these TAs looking to get a piece of work? What should your schedule be? What should your strategy be? What should your approach be? Victoria is going to tell all. So we're looking forward to that. Very, very excited about that. And that is in two weeks. So. Now, Max, at this time of the show, we kind of talk to people and say, what is the top tip? Now, we've kind of influenced your top tip a little bit here because you told us something uh, when we were warming up that is is really interesting. So this is your top tip, which is take the free demo. Do you just want to explain what that is? Yeah. Uh, if you go to talk to Sam.ai, you can sign up and it's free to use now and I mean, I'm not going to say forever, forever, but I, I intend it to be forever. <laughs> uh, so you can get 100 minutes of free interviews per month uh, and it renews every month. So we, we, we offered this for free because we, want, we realize this is new. People have to build trust and, and get confident and change the voice, change the prompt, see what works for them. Uh, and and if they're ready to do a little bit more volume, then they can they can talk to us, and we can we can well, find we out. Well, we don't um, we don't, as you know, on this show, we don't allow people to sell. But because this was free, and because I am so obsessed with people really embracing AI, Max had come up with something else. I can't remember what it was now as his top tip, but I said it was my suggestion. No, why don't you go with this? Just have a look at it. Get in there, take it, have a play with it, play and with even it. if it's not right for you at this time. I haven't come across game. anything else that's like that that's free. So this, yeah. is, this is your chance to to have fun and, yeah, and play yeah, around yeah. with it. And 
And uh, if you want to create a voice that sounds more like you, or if there's a language that's missing, I want to do an interview in uh, in Turkish. We don't have Turkish yet. No problem. I'll add it for you, uh, you know, a couple of days time. Fantastic. Amazing. Okay. Mike, do you want to close us down with uh, kind of your final message? Yeah, I would actually, because, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Kirsty, for being the hostess with the most S, as always. And I'd very much like Max to thank Max coming on the show. Obviously, he's younger, good looking, better shirt, French, yada, yada, yada. But nonetheless, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. And thank you very much for sharing your knowledge on this. My my final message, I think, is 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 just to echo what I said a few minutes ago, is is don't don't be a laggard on this. You don't have to go full on. You don't have to just start doing this, but you need to take some time to understand where the trajectory is taking us because <laughs> it's taking us somewhere. So my advice is get, get stuck in now, see what you can do with this and begin to imagine what the future holds for you. And Mike, you did also mention the AI conference. So if anybody wants to learn more about our, which we are holding in person in Birmingham, just put AI into the comments and we will send you. And, it, and it's going to be a small event. It's not going to be very many, probably 20 people. We just want to make it very focused, but we're really going to dig very, very deep in AI, get a lot of products demonstrated, hopefully get some people that are using AI to come in as well. So it's going to be a good event. Okay. All right. Guys, thank you so much once again for the listeners, for Max and for Mike, and we will see you in two weeks.